the bomb, check out realhomecooking.com. Said if you wanna cook with me when you wanna to be the bomb, check out realhomecooking.com. I said real home, real home, real homecooking.com. I said real home, real home, real homecooking.com. <laughs> yeah, we are back, we are back, we are back. Real home cooking. Good morning, everybody. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Welcome to Real Home uh -oh. Cooking. Once again, my name is Domingo, and I am your host here at Around the Coffee. I don't know. Uh -oh. I got, uh -oh. I got I got feedback everywhere now. Hold on a second. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Had, had a little feedback going all over the place. Welcome this morning to Around the Coffee Pop. And this is where food and news collide. And today we got a special program where we're talking about the 10 strangest foods from around the world. And uh, I want to give a shout out to NEM for uh, the suggestion on yesterday. And uh, I, I, as soon as he said it, I was like, you know what? Got to do it. Got to do it. This is an uh, 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 awesome, awesome topic. So I was excited to do it. And uh, actually... Man, we could have did 50 of these. There's so many strange, crazy uh, uh, foods that are out there that we could have done. Um, I narrowed it down to 10 of them because I didn't want the show to be too long. Uh, one of these, I've actually, hold on, I didn't, did I try it? I, I think I, no, yeah, I nibbled it, but I didn't really eat it, eat it. And uh, I'm going to show it to you. It's the number one. It's number one. It's number one. And I'm almost ashamed to say I even put it even a tiny bit in my mouth. But I did. It was, I was under pressure. I was under a lot of pressure. A girlfriend of mine is from the Philippines. And uh, I'll just leave it like that. It was girl pressure. I was in the Navy. And it was a girlfriend of mine from the Philippines. And she made me do it. Made me do it. So let, let me get my PowerPoint presentation up. And we're going to go with number one. Number one is Balut. Balut. And if you look at it right there, that is a nasty, nasty, ugly looking thing. That is a duck egg. And if you look at it, it is an embryo. It is a almost fully formed duck that's still in the egg, probably ready, almost ready to just pop out. And it's it's boiled and cooked, and then they peel it open, and sometimes there's even feathers, and they eat it just like that. It's a delicacy in the Philippines. Why I don't know. Um, there's the yolk part of it, there's the white part of it, and then, of course, there is the embryo of the duck. I think they do do the chickens as well, but the duck is the more popular of the balut. And so balut is, once again, a delicacy in the Philippines. Uh, are there anyone, is there anyone out there who has ever tried balut? Yeah, W. Davis says balut, no thank you. Uh... Yeah, Pony Boy says strange food number one, okra. No, okra has nothing on balut at all. I would eat okra all day long compared to uh, to balut. Yeah, balut is is nasty. Matter of fact, uh, when she would eat balut, um, there would be no kissing action going on at all uh, between her and I if she were eating balut. No, thank you. Matter of fact, I made. A prohibition to even having that in the house at all when I was present after a while okay so uh, no balut balut is uh, matter of fact just the, just the thought of it T look, look look at that just one more time oh no 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 poor little chick poor little chick no thank you no thank you no thank you no thank you so no to balut. That is definitely weird food. Nasty, weird, strange, 
Who thought? Who thought of that? I mean, was that like one day you were just boiling eggs and all of a sudden one just kind of happened to fall in and you know someone ate it? I I, I, I don't know how how that happened, but that's the strange one. That's number one. Number one. Number one. All right, let's go to uh, how do I get to the second one? Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, number two. Eskimo, Eskimo. Um, give you a little little background. Eskimo, Eskimo are ant, is ant larvae. It's a dish native to central Mexico. Eskimos were once considered a delicacy by the Aztecs. Basically, it's uh, insect caviar. These light colored eggs are harvested from the Magui plants. Uh, they resemble corn kernels or pine nuts they have a poppy texture uh more crunchy if fried more crunchy if fried and a slightly nutty taste mm. sounds delicious doesn't it <laughs> they are often pan fried with butter and spices mm. with butter and spices eskimos can be found in tacos and omelets or served alone accompanied with guacamole or tortillas so uh, if you're ever going uh, to Mexico, make sure you know what's in your taco. Make sure you know, you know, what's in your taco. Make sure you have a good translator. All right. Uh, that's not just corn, you know, because you got how many, you know, you got sometimes you have white corn. Uh, so make sure that, that you know exactly what's in there or else you might be eating ant larvae. All right. So uh, be very careful. Be very careful what you're eating. All right. Um, w. Dave says that's not as bad as Balu. Uh, true, but uh, he said he'll still pass. True, I, I will also pass. Um, uh, but I I, 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 I wouldn't like any of them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't want any of that. Let's see what's next. What's next? And they, they do look, you know. Tacoish, they look like good taco meat. Um, number three, probably still not as bad as Balu. Well, no, I don't know. Yeah, just as bad. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it go. Is that showing up? Okay, Hackerel. I don't know if I'm even pronoun pronouncing that right. Hackerel? Hackerel? Let me, let me let me let me try to get the pronunciation right. Um, Herkel, Herkel. Anyway, H A K A R L. Herkel. It's a rotten, fermented shark meat from Iceland. Rotten fermented shark meat from Iceland. Rotten fermented shark meat from Iceland. Doesn't actually doesn't. From the looks of it, it really doesn't look that bad. I, I mean, it looks like a cured, looks like a nice cured meat to me. But upon further investigation, this rotten shark meat, first timers are oftentimes advised to pinch their nose while taking the first bite. That's a sign right there that maybe you ought to stay away from this if you're told to pinch your nose when taking your first bite of this this uh, morsel. Pinch your nose while taking the first bite as the smell is much stronger uh, than the taste. It's often eaten with a shot of local spirit. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. Check this out. Now, you know Anthony Bourdain, he goes around and he eats everywhere and he eats anything, all right? So Anthony Bourdain has a palate that, you know, I mean, he he's eating some pretty disgusting stuff. So obviously he states it this. Here's his quote. He described Hackerel as the single worst, most disgusting and terrible tasting thing that he has ever eaten. Now this dude eats bugs, eats, you know, He's eaten inner every single organ and inner that has ever existed in any animal. 
And he said that this is the worst thing that he's ever tasted in his life. Mm. Yeah. The smell in these places, I was reading, reading up on this uh, last night, and it says the smell in these places drives people insane. Uh, you don't, you know, if you live near uh, a trash pit, it d didn't even compare to the smell of being in one of these places. So, uh, all right. So let's, oh, this next one, this next one's going to creep some of y'all out. Uh, number four, Kasu Marsu, Kasu Marsu, Kasu Marsu. Rotten cheese with maggots. Rotten cheese with maggots. Actually, my, my, my brother told me there is also, also, is, is there an echo there? Let me see. Is there, you guys hearing an echo? Echo, is there an echo still? Maybe that was early. Um, Kasu Marasu, rotten cheese with maggots. Um, this rotten cheese, let me, uh, get back over here. It's known as rotten cheese. Sardinia's Casu Marsu is made with pecorino, wonderful cheese, that has gone bad, really bad. The larvae of cheese flies is, are added to pecorino and they're hatching inside and they start burrowing inside and around and digesting the fats of the cheese. The results are is a weeping tongue burning delicacy. Hold on. Did they just use the word delicacy? Did they just use the word delicacy and maggots in the same sentence? Oh. The result is a weeping tongue burning delicacy that you can eat with or without the maggots. Ugh. Okay. All right. I think I'll pass on that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I love cheese. I love cheese. Um, but no, no, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, I, I think my brother sent me another one. I th Let me see if that was the same one. Cause I think there was, a one in France that had the same idea. Here we go. Yeah, they called it Ortolans. Ortolans. So let me make sure that's the same thing. Ortolans. Ortolans is oh no 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 that was that was something else that he was telling me about Ortolans he was telling me was these birds that they throw into this liqueur and then they they eat they drink the uh, they eat the bird finches yeah they throw these these birds into this liquor and then they eat the the uh, birds the finches. Um, after they fermented in this uh, liquor. Weird. That that should have been on my list. I, I didn't really look that one up. I thought for some reason that that was the same as this type of cheese because um, we were talking about that as well. So, But um, anyway, maybe we'll make another list another day because there were a few things I wanted to add to it. So let's see, number five. Let's see, number five, number five. Yo, another thing about that cheese I don't know. All right, all right, all right. I'm just gonna go to number five. Yo, this this one was crazy. Yeah, this 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 doesn't even make any sense. Wasp crackers. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Wasp crackers. I mean, first of all, I hope they took the stingers out. I hope they took the stingers out before they put the wasp inside the crackers. But secondly, why? Why? Like, why? Like, why? Like, huh? Like, uh, what? What? Like, what? Like, who? Why? Wasp and crackers? What? 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 Bruh. Uh. Bruh. What? Why? I don't, like, why? Like, in Japan? I mean, okay, I, 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 maybe I 
legacy in a, in, in a impoverished country where there was nothing and, you know, maybe they didn't have a lot of resources and, you know, but in Japan, why? Wasps? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know. Yeah, I, I, I know they eat some weird stuff. Wasps. During the summer, wasps can get into shakes, you know. Okay. I, I, maybe maybe someone was making a batch of cookies and the wasp got in somehow and somebody took a bite and they were like, yo, this, this is awesome. And somehow that caught on. But who's, okay. The first person that bit into it was like, okay, yo, this is good. But then, like, who's the second person that was like, like, they talked into eating them. Like, yo, taste this cookie. You know what I mean? And then, like, how did they convince it? Like, how did that catch on? You know what I mean? How does that catch on, like, afterward? Like, I don't think I can convince my brother, like, you know, yo, taste this, this wasp cookie. You know? I, I see people, like, eating roaches and stuff like that. Like, but how do you, how do you get a person to, to do that? Like, I, 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 I never understood that. You know, I... I Chocolate covered roaches and stuff like how? I, I don't understand that. Anyway. Okay. Alright. That's just I'm I'm rambling. Moving on. Moving on. Wasp crackers. Okay. Um to each their own. Not me. Not me. Not in my house. Not in my house. Not in my place. Not with my kids. Not in my community. Okay. Hoo-wee! Here's another one. Fried spiders in Cambodia. In Cambodia. Fried, fried spiders. Okay. I mean, Cambodia. Fried spiders. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. Cambodia, fried spiders. I don't have a problem with it. Wasps in Japan. All right. I'm just, I'm just trying to make sense. I'm just trying to make sense. I'm just trying to make sense of it. All right. All right. Call me crazy if you want. You won't be the first. Okay. Cambodia fried spiders. Those, look, look, look at that. Those, but those, those spiders look meaty though, don't they? Look at that. Those fight spiders look meaty. They look nasty though. Look at ew. Those are some dark. I wonder what what do you think fried spiders taste like? What do fried spiders taste? Has anyone ever eaten a fried spider? Fried spiders. Hmm, I wonder. What do fried spiders taste like? I'm gonna look that up. Let's see if Google has an answer for that. What let, and watch it say it tastes like chicken. Mm, it better not say it tastes like chicken. What do fried spiders taste like? It better not taste like chicken. Taste like. Better not say chicken. Well, you might expect it might be crispy on the outside, gooey in the middle. And that's not a bad start. The legs are pleasantly crunchy and have a little flesh in them. And then you have the head and the body, which have a delicate white meat inside. Inside, rather like a cross between chicken and cod. Does everything in the world taste like chicken? You know what? People always tell me this, right? They say, well, this tastes like chicken. Or this tastes like chicken, or this that that, that tastes like chicken. Or they tell me some weird food, and then they compare it to chicken, and then my always my, my comeback is always, well, I'll just eat chicken then. I don't want to eat that then. I'll just eat the chicken. All right, don't give me something weird. If you tell me it tastes like chicken, I'll just have the chicken. No, thank you, fried spider. I'll just have the chicken. Thank you. All right, number seven. Number seven. Now, this is, this is strange, it's probably not as bad, it's just a little strange, it's just strange looking, probably more than, um, 
than anything. It's got a little, little, little history to it. Little history to it. Stargazy Pie from England. All right. Stargazy Pie is a Cornish dish made of pie. Of, of sardines along with eggs and potatoes covered in a pastry dish. Um, the fish heads are protruding through the crust, so they appear to be gazing skyward. Uh, the dish is traditionally held to have originated from the village of Mousehole in Cornwall and is traditionally eating during the festival of Tom Balcock's Eve to celebrate his heroic catch during a very stormy winter. According to Modern Festival, it's combined with Mosau Village Illuminations. The entire catch was baked into a huge stargazy pie encompassing seven types of fishes and saving the village from starvation. So there's a lot of history in this pie. And um, so yeah, it's, it's very symbolic. You see the star there, the fish. Uh-oh, what did I do? The fish looking upward and the stars looking toward the sky. Da 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 da. So it's not necessarily uh, that strange, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> w. Dave Carter the starfish. Yeah, starfish. Okay. Um, let's see what's next. Number eight. Mmm. Eskimo ice cream. Eskimo ice cream. Yum. 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 Who likes Eskimo ice cream? Have any of you ever had Eskimo ice cream? Eskimo ice cream. Delicious. Well, it looks delicious until you realize what it really is. Right? What thing? Everything that looks good isn't really good. Let me uh, tell you what this Eskimo ice cream really is. Eskimo ice cream can sound sweet and creamy, but it really isn't. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's made up of reindeer fat, seal oil, freshly fallen snow, berries, and ground fish. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum. Yeah. Sweet and creamy, isn't it? Sweet and creamy. <laughs> Reindeer fat. Mm. Seal oil. Freshly fallen snow berries and ground fish. Yeah, who thought of that one? Mm. Mm. There's nothing sweet in that either. Wow. Does that, that just look, that brown. It, it looked delicious too. It really does look nice. If I put that on my kid's plate. <laughs> That's a good, that's a good prank right there. Put put a glop of that on the kid's plate and then, you know, just see them, see them eat that. We ought to get Jimmy Kimmel to, to do, to do that and, and send that to the parents and tell them to put this, this uh, Eskimo ice cream and see the kids' reactions and have them all submit the videos and, you know, wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> yes. All right, all right, let's see. Number nine, number nine. Let's see. Yeah, I told you, look, we're, we're already half hour in and, and we're, we're only on number nine. If I did 20 of these, we'd be here forever. Mmm, yum. Beyond eggy. Beyond eggy. Wonderful, wonderful, delicious. Look at that meaty, these meaty Korean delicacies. These are steamed or boiled silkworm pupae. They're seasoned and they're eaten as snacks. Mmm, they're, they're, they're said to taste like a mixture of raw chestnuts. They're like cooked with soybeans and mushrooms. Or, or, or excuse me, they're, they're, they taste like a mixture of raw chestnuts or cooked soybeans or mushrooms or wet bark from a tree. Yum. Yum. Does that look delicious, y'all? No. No. 
No, thank you. No, th one thing it didn't say it tastes like chicken. It didn't say it tastes like chicken. Wow, one of the few things that doesn't taste like chicken. Hmm. All right, you know, you know, I always save the best for last. Actually, I kind of started you off with a pretty good one, didn't I? But I do have a pretty big one as well. <sighs> I'm not even going to talk to this one yet. I'm just going to let it sink in. Just going to let you look at it for a second. Yeah, yeah, yep, people actually drink this. You want to get your buzz on? And uh, really, this isn't even about getting your buzz on. This is, this is actually medicinal, believe it or not or what they believe to be medicinal. Baby mice wine is a health tonic. Yeah. Let me let me read let me read about this. Let me uh tell you about this. This drink is speculated by many to be of Chinese origin also found in Korea, in ancient Korea. The mice-infused wine is considered to be a health tonic, a cure-all, cure-all, to anything from liver disease to asthma. Please, no, please, disclaimer, do not try this at home. Please consult any doctor before attempting to create this wine, uh, or use this on any disease. None of these claims have been uh, approved by the FDA or any, any government agency, health organization, world health organization. And here at Real Home Cooking, we do not endorse the use of baby mice wine at all. Now, to continue reading, the story goes that villagers who couldn't afford better medicine would drink this instead. There is no significant research proving its medicinal benefits, yet others still put forward claims that uh, toward this claim that baby mice wine holds medicinal value, medicinal value. Um, what they would do, they would take Baby mice, three days old, three days old, drown them in the wine. All right, they would have to be three days old, three days old, drown, and they would have to be drowned in the wine and then fermented for months. So there was a, there was a set thing, drowned in the wine, fermented for months, and then they would be able to drink this elixir in order to heal all these different ailments in your body. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. Yes, they do it, but no, 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 no. Yes, we are a weird species. We are a weird species. We are a weird species as evidenced by all of this. By all of this, we are a weird, weird species. Our palates are weird. Our thinking is weird. We indeed are a weird species. You real ones are weird, but I'm glad that we're weird together. Right here on Real Home Cooking. I thank you for being here and being on this journey with me. 
Glad to have you here. Can't wait for you to be here with me on tomorrow, 11 o'clock a.m. as we get cooking tomorrow, 11 a.m. right here. Friday Food Wishes. Be here, be square. Watch out for the link. I'll be putting the link up shortly for Friday Food Wishes. God bless. Take care. See you there. Thank you. Please comment, like, subscribe when this video goes up. Share it with others. And uh, I will see you on tomorrow. God bless. Take care. Till next time. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.